This video is all about choosing and using the right filter for the job in the chemistry lab. There's quite a few options when it comes to choosing a filter, so let's have a look through them. The first and simplest one that almost everybody would recognise as being from the chemistry lab is a plain glass funnel. And into a plain glass funnel you put a neatly fluted filter paper and the combination of those sits into the top of your conical flask and you pour the liquid through them. We'll come back to those in a sec. Another choice that's available is a frigid funnel. A frigid funnel has a layer of sintered glass across the entrance to the funnel, or the exit of the funnel, which filters out the material. And that frigid glass is made of tiny particles of glass melted so that they stick together but don't form a solid layer. And so they can come with various different porosities or various different fineness of filter. And they're really quite useful. We'll come back to them again too. The third option are Buckner funnels and Hirsch funnels. So this tiny little funnel that you see here is called a Hirsch funnel and its bigger brother is called a Buckner funnel. Buckner funnels and Hirsch funnels both use Buckner flasks, which are conical flasks with a sidearm that are specially reinforced to withstand a vacuum. And the black rubber ring that you see is otherwise known as a gasket and it allows you to form a vacuum seal between the funnel and the conical flask. You need to use a filter paper when using either of these funnels. The holes aren't designed to trap material and having filter paper in there makes it much easier to get the material that you're trying to recover back. So let's have a look at some use cases. The first flask contains an organic material that is not soluble in the solvent that is present and we want that organic material back. The second has a heavy material but we want to keep the liquid and the third has a finely dispersed combination of powder and liquid and we want both of them. So the easiest one to separate with a plain funnel and a fluted filter paper is the sand and water or the heavy material that we want to leave behind and the liquid we want to separate out. And a fluted filter paper works really well here because the liquid can travel very quickly through it because it has such a large surface area. It's also great when you have hot, hot liquids that you're trying to filter because there's no vacuum and so because there's no vacuum you don't boil your solvent as it goes through the filter paper. It allows it to stay hot and things don't come out of solution. And that's going to be really important when you're doing your recrystallization because if you've got hot liquid you don't want to cool down as you're filtering it. You can see here it does a very nice job of filtering it and we leave most of the sand behind and the liquid travels very rapidly through the well fluted filter paper. If you want to see how to flute a filter paper as neatly as that there's an extra video follow the link that's coming up now. When your filtration is finished you can take the filter paper by the top push it down a little bit into the funnel to strain away the last few drops and then squeeze it together. Be careful when you're doing this because the tip that I'm pointing to now is very delicate. So if you manhandle it too roughly, you'll crack your filter paper and the solid will fall through and you'll have to do your filtration all again. Take the filter paper out, put it into the beaker and dispose of it as, a, as you're advised to in the lab. In this case, we can just put it in the bin because it's paper and water. Next is the Buckner funnel. When you're using a Buckner funnel, always clamp the flask first. That is the most important thing. The flask is quite easy to topple over, especially when you put on a heavy vacuum tube. One tip for using heavy vacuum tubes like that is that you should push them on and push them off. And you'll see that again when I'm taking the tubing off. It prevents it constricting around the sidearm. Next pop in your gasket and then put in the funnel itself. Once you got the funnel in, you can put in the filter paper and you're pretty much ready to go. You'll notice that I'm turning the vacuum on and off here and it's important to have the vacuum running before you start to pour your liquid in otherwise it'll go down the sides. Another tip for best results is that you should lightly wet the filter paper once it's held by the vacuum with whatever solvent you're going to be filtering through. That way it's guaranteed not to lift up at the sides. And finally by pouring it in gently you're guaranteed good results. Well almost. Let's see what happens. So from the side then moisten the filter paper with a little bit of liquid. The vacuum is on and then get ready to pour in your mixture. It's worth swooshing it around a little bit first, swoosh being the technical term. That way you ensure that more of the solid makes it over and you need to use less liquid to wash out the beaker the second time. We wash out the beaker and we try to get all of our solid out of the beaker and onto the filter paper. Once we're done with that then, we wanna turn off the vacuum before we start to disassemble it. If you try and disassemble it with the vacuum still on, something's gonna break where liquid is going to go flying, flying across the lab. So turn the vacuum off and then push the tubing off. So you can see as I push the tubing off, it comes off quite easily. If you pull the tubing, it will constrict and it becomes harder and harder. And when it does come off, you'll end up popping it off. 
you can see then I took out my sample, I took out the filter paper, and I disassembled it all. So there are two of the possible funnels, plain funnels and Buchner funnels, and you can pause to read a little bit more about them now. Hirsch funnels are just like Buchner funnels, only smaller, so you'd have no problem using those. Let's have a quick look at what can go wrong. Well, firstly, you've got to make sure that you have your gasket seated right. You want to have it so that it's just above the rim of the flask. If it's not above the rim of the flask, it won't engage and your vacuum won't pull liquid through. And more than likely, your filter paper will start to float and you'll get material throughout the funnel. and You'll have a mess and you'll have to wash it through and you'll have to start again. So just make sure that's how it's going. The other thing that's important is to not turn the vacuum up too high. Start with that at quite a low setting. If you turn it up high, you'll more than likely pull a hole through your filter paper, and when that happens, your solid will end up in your flask and you'll have to start again. And it's a bit of a messy cleanup too. So try and avoid that. Okay, let's look at the last kind of funnel then, a fritted funnel. Well, here we have a particularly nice fritted funnel because it has a sidearm built into it. The first thing to know about fritted funnels is that they're much more expensive than either Buckner or plain funnels. You don't need to use a filter paper in them, and they're much better at filtering out fine powders, but they're also permanent, so you can't clean them as easily as taking away a piece of filter paper. It also means if you contaminate them with something that you can't remove, or you're concerned about sample-to-sample -sample contamination, they're not really a suitable thing to use. On the other hand, if you're trying to recover a fine powder from a liquid and you're having difficulty using regular uh, fil filter paper, or if you have a very small amount of sample that you really need to get back and you don't want it to get lost in a filter paper, fritted funnels make excellent choices. But you'll see that they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Here, just for demonstration purposes, I show you how slow a fritted funnel is, because that is their other disadvantage. Typically glass frits, like the one shown, are much slower compared to either Buckner funnels or regular filtration. That is offset against the advantage that they give you much finer filtration, and that's often the trade-off. So there are your three kinds of funnels. You're going to see plain funnels and Buckner funnels in the lab this week, and you'll see glass sinters in the future. If you have any questions, post them up on the Moodle forum, post one in the comments below, or ask your lecturer in the lab. I hope that's been helpful. Bye!